They call me the problem, but you could call me the can man, cause anybody can get it. Africans, Americans, Dominicans, Mexicans, anybody can. We're live here from Atlantic City, boxingvoice.com, with head trainer of Joel Diaz Jr., Abel Sanchez. How you doing today, sir? What did you think of uh, Joel's performance tonight? You know, I thought he did well. Uh, he got a little impatient at the, in the first round. Uh, we knew we had 10 rounds. I told him to just take his time. And in the first round, he got a little uh, out of sorts. Uh, but in the second round, he settled down. And I knew it was going to be a matter of time. This kid's very strong, punches very hard, and uh, he's in great shape. So great sparring. All that in the gym uh, ends up second round knockout. He seems to be a good listener while in the ring because I heard you scream out from the corner, split the guard when he had Sanchez on the rope, and he hit him with a nice uppercut that you know snapped his head back. Is that a testament of what kind of fighter and listener he is? Uh, yes, it is, but I think that when you have a, a kid that's strong and a big puncher, they tend to look for that perfect shot, and we're trying to get him away from that. We're trying to get him just move his hands and, and pick his spots, and if he picks his spots, he's going to land the one that he wants, and ultimately he did. I think that the, not only the uppercut, but there's some body shots that hurt uh, Sanchez, and I, I knew, it, like I said, it was going to be a matter of time. Now, aside from being a 10-rounder, Sanchez was a southpaw. Is that something you guys wanted to focus on, just to give Joel a different look at different fighters? No, actually, he hates southpaws, <laughs> <laughs> like everybody else. Uh, it just uh, This is the next guy in line. That's what the promoter got for us, and we prepared for a southpaw. We can't be – I think that a fighter can't be uh, – picky and, and choose the fighters that he wants to fight. We need to learn all aspects of this and by fighting a southpaw we had to go back to the gym and work on things that maybe we don't work on every day and, and it was good for him. Now obviously you know he wanted to get rounds in here. Is there anything Diaz can leave the East Coast with an experience like this where a guy either quits on his stool or you know referee stops a fight in the second round? I think that he can leave with the thought that uh, southpaws are right-handed. Uh, all he has to do is just do what he does best, and uh, they're eventually going to fall. Uh, we hope to uh, be fighting soon again because two rounds is not enough for him. Uh, but leaving the East Coast with a win is actually what we thought we were going to do, and we're happy about that. Now, 130 is the division with a few up-and-comers. What would be the next step for a young guy and a talent just like Joel Diaz Jr.? Uh, you know, he's still young. He's only 20 years old. I really don't want to uh, rush him. I don't want his managers to rush him. Uh, this kid we fought had a lot of fights. The one before that had a lot of fights, a lot of experience. But these kind of fights are good for another, maybe another six months, another two, three fights. And then maybe when he has 15 or 16 fights, step him up into a, a top 10 level. Now, he told us on our show that it was your idea to get rid of the gauges in his ears. Why was that? You know what? He's a good-looking young man. Uh, we we are in the entertainment business, and I believe that uh, the gauges just give him a, a, an image that was not good for him. Uh, it's not conducive to a, to the nice kid that he is. He's a real nice, respectable young man, and I think the gauges, in my mind anyway, to the viewing public and to the boxing fans, the older boxing fans, is not something that they want to see. Before we let you go, what do you think of Golovkin and Prasca, September 1st? I think it's going to be a great fight. Uh, I hope that... Uh, that uh, we get a full house. I hope that HBO is satisfied with the performance of both guys. I think that Golovkin will be much too strong for him, but I want Prasca to put up a good fight. He's a definitely a good fighter, and after he gets beat by Golovkin, he's going to go on to, uh, to learn a little bit more. I think it's too early for him. Even though he's got 29 fights, I think it's too early for him as far as uh, the level of opposition that he's going to be facing on the first. And I said that was my last question, but I lied. Uh, how, how soon or how far down the line do you, we see Joel Diaz competing for a world title? I would say we're not looking. We're looking a year from now, I, th I think. Uh, a year from now, and I hope it's a year from now or no sooner. Just because, like I said, he, he's still a learning young man. He's 20 years old. Uh, I, I don't want to. I, I don't want to rush him. You have Canelo, that's 21 years old or 22 years old, and he's got 40 fights. He's been fighting since he was 15 as a pro. This kid just has been a pro a year and a half. Uh, it does. He doesn't need to be going into those fights just yet. Uh, I'll get him there, but uh, it's going to take us a little time. We you have boxing fans, Abel Sanchez, head trainer of Joel Diaz Jr. We'd like to see both of you soon on our television screens. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You never give me a fair shake. HBO needs to fire you. You don't know shit about boxing. You ain't shit. You're, you're not shit. I wish I was 50 years younger you and I'd kick your ass. You won't do shit. When you hit the pedal, ain't gonna be no gas in the car at the end of this.